So on to video three of PIC computing, A level computing videos, and we're going to continue looking at the system's life cycle and the information collection stage. Last time we looked at uh, the problem definition and feasibility study stages, the first two stages of the system's life cycle, and following that it's the information collection stage. In this stage, the client and the analyst will do a lot more communicating with each other. There may be several people working on both sides, so there may be key stakeholders on the client side, such as people who work using existing systems that have problems, um, but also maybe people higher up the business, such as senior management or even the CEO, chief executive officer. On the analyst side, there might be several analysts. There may be systems analysts who are more technical and also business analysts who understand business problems more. If both parties are happy that a project is feasible, then the information collection stage will start. And in this stage, the analysts will collect more information about the problem to understand the problem better, to understand the existing solution and system, to understand what is wrong with it, and to understand how it can be improved. Whilst they're doing this, there are several methods of information collection available to them. These are interviews, questionnaires, meetings, observations, and documentation. In an exam, you might need to be able to outline what happens in these different stages, but also to highlight any advantages or disadvantages of each method. So we'll look at these in a little bit more detail now. Firstly, interviews. These are normally held between two people, one client and one analyst. But as you can see in the picture, it, that's not always the case. There may be more than two people as part of an interview. The analyst will ask the client for information about how things currently work so that the analyst can figure out what is currently happening. Good things about interviews are they allow lots of important information to be gathered from key stakeholders. Analysts can tailor questions as the conversation flows. Bad things are they are time consuming and expensive and they're only good for getting the thoughts of a few people. Another bad thing is the interviewee, that's the per person or people being interviewed, might get nervous and give poor answers or incorrect answers as a result or might even be hostile towards an analyst. Questionnaires are another method that can be used. Questionnaires shouldn't be confused with surveys and we'll look at the difference between the two briefly. Questionnaires are to find out information or thoughts from individuals, and the focus is on individuals, whereas surveys are to find out trends from larger groups or samples of people, and the focus is always on the group or the sample. So we're more interested in questionnaires as part of the system's life cycle. Good things about questionnaires are we can get opinions from a large amount of people more quickly. Bad things are they are often difficult to design and create. Meetings are where we'll have a lot more people than we will do in an interview situation. Good things are that allows lots of important information to be gathered from several key stakeholders. Bad things are some people can dominate meetings so others can't put their point across so easily. Some people just like the sound of their own voice too much and that might stop other people's valued contributions. Observations are where analysts will watch people working to see how they currently do things. Good things about this is the observer will notice new things that the client may not realise. The observer can confirm things that they'd previously already thought. Bad things are the observed workers may not do their usual job whilst being watched. They might be nervous or try and impress too much and not do their usual thing. Whilst they're doing it, they may have resentment or hostility towards the person observing them. People just don't like being watched whilst they're working and the observer might not see everything they should do so there might be things that the person that's doing the job might do only on certain days and the observer might not observe on that particular day the last type of method of information collection is documentation this is where the analyst will collect things like existing technical manuals or user guides any diagrams that have been drawn about the system or any sort of paperwork to do with it at all Good things are, this information is usually reliable. Bad things are, they might not always exist, particularly with old paper-based systems. So that's the information collection stage of the system's life cycle. 
over the next couple of videos we'll look at detail in the at the analysis stage